nerderotic.com. Greetings, you over 866,000 practitioners of common sense and the 40% who haven't subscribed yet. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to brace yourselves for some shocking news. The Marvels may flop. The news came to us a couple of days ago, and spoilers, it's not looking too good. Long-range box office forecast, Marvel Studios' The Marvels. 2023's holiday movie season gets its first temple release on November 10th with the 33rd chapter of the former MCU and now what will possibly be the season finale of the MCU. And it's tracking well behind films like Ant-Man Mania. And this article has led to some disturbing headlines in more ways than one for Disney Marvel. The Marvel's early box office projections are 72% worse than Mania. Early box office projections for the Marvel's paint a bleak picture for the MCU movie. The Marvel's early box office tracking shows significant drop-off. Ouch, the Marvel's is long-range tracking at 50 to 75 million domestically. The Marvel's box office pre-sale numbers are alarmingly low for an MCU movie. While the Marvel's is an exciting prospect for Brie Larson's Captain Marvel and a lot of YouTubers, the fans might not be inclined to show up for the movie. First, Captain Marvel 2, which is actually called the Marvel's, box office projections are abysmal. And I seem to recall a hell of a lot of fans and a few YouTubers saying exactly this over the past four years since the sequel was announced. But we could be wrong. This could be the Barbie of the MCU. It seems that the same access media that literally died on the hill protecting woke Hollywood and films like Captain Marvel have gone down the outright pipeline. They seem to have forgotten that this film made a billion dollars at the box office. It must have completely slipped their minds that Rotten Tomatoes, once considered a legitimate metric for Hollywood, completely changed their website for Captain Marvel. It was that important of a film. And just in case you little Judases in the access media have completely forgotten, after admittedly, Bree said some regrettable things in the past. I do not need a 40 year old white dude to tell me what didn't work for him about A Wrinkle in Time. It wasn't made for him. Since then, she's been pretty quiet, and she completely resurrected her career by doing things like starting a YouTube channel and welcoming back the male gaze. And you know what? Never mind that Captain Marvel was sandwiched between two of the most anticipated sequels of all time. And I don't think anyone should seriously consider the fact that this may be the most unanticipated sequel to a billion dollar film outside of Aquaman in recent memory that took four years to produce. Due to multiple delays, they were just trying to get it right. Never mind Captain Marvel's 45% audience score. It was obviously review bombing. And maybe all of that comic book fan rage about turning the male Captain Marvel into a net bending was over exaggerated. The funny thing about the negative bands on the TV show is that they're actually meant to be a big callback to the OG version of Captain Marvel, the very first version, who was a man called Marvel, who did appear during the Captain Marvel movie in the MCU, but he was played by Annette Benning, so they changed the character just a little bit. What? What the f And don't you even think about the fact that Captain Marvel was demoted in her own sequel. When we all know Brie voluntarily took a step back so we could see something in a Marvel film we haven't seen to date the girl power of friendship. And sure, the director for the Marvels said she was gonna make a very different Marvel film by making it silly, which will absolutely differentiate it from anything that's been released since the beginning of Marvel Stage 4, and it has more cats. And I wouldn't be concerned at all that Brie Larson herself said she wasn't sure if she was welcome in another Marvel film. I don't know, does anyone want me to do it again? What? <laughs> yes, there was a well-placed song lyric in the first trailer that was supposed to send a message. A direct response to the backlash Marvel received from a deleted scene they released. Nice scuba suit. How about a smile from me, huh? A smile? I'm offering to help you. The least you could do is give me a smile. How about a handshake? <laughs> I'm Veers. People call me the Dawn. Here's a proposition for you. You're gonna give me your jacket, your helmet, and your motorcycle, and in return, I'm gonna let you keep your hand. Take it! What, no smile? The Don was obviously a representation of all those toxic male fans that financially supported Marvel over the decades. Regrettably, this may have led to a ratioed trailer or two, but it might not be a cause for concern. Then there's the time and budget it took to make the Marvels. Over four years and $270 million, one of the most expensive MCU films ever made. To be fair, that's still two years less than it took to make the entire Lord of the Rings trilogy. And it's $11 million cheaper than the Lord of the Rings 
trilogy overall budget. Sure, the hour and 45 minute runtime of the Marvels is a little bit shorter than the 11 hour, 36 minute runtime of the Lord of the Rings extended editions, but maybe this is just a case of quality over quantity. <laughs> And to hedge you off in the comments section, no, that's not adjusted for inflation, but if the box office doesn't have to do it, why should I? Maybe it's not that big a deal that you have to go back and watch Captain Marvel, WandaVision, Miss Marvel, and Secret Invasion to watch the Captain Marvel sequel. Maybe all of this talk of the MCU is completely over-exaggerated. Like many women around the world watched Avengers Endgame and had that six seconds of all the, all the Marvel women together. And I, I once had like chills, but I also was very annoyed. I was like, two hours of this, please. Let's find out. We had a lot to choose from. I'm gonna go with the direct. First Captain Marvel 2 box office projections are abysmal. According to box office pros, the Marvels is projected to earn between 50 million and 75 million domestically over its opening weekend and between 121 million and 189 million in total domestically. Again, that's in total. And that's with picking up all of the IMAX screens that Dune 2 abandoned. This is a far cry from the first female Captain Marvel film, which was estimated to make between 100 and 120 million in its domestic debut, and it ended up making 150. Yes, it had a lot to do with it being sandwiched between two of the most anticipated sequels of all time. And it probably doesn't help that the Marvels will be the most MCU film ever made, stealing the crown from the previous Woman King, Wakanda Forever. Unfortunately for Disney Marvel, the news gets worse. The 50 to $75 million figure is roughly half of what was estimated for Warner Brothers The Flash, which after middling box office projections would go on to become one of the biggest financial failures in studio history. Now, Box Office Pro goes over some pros and cons, which I have largely gone over, and no, there aren't any pros, including this one. Debuting over Veterans Day weekend could create some backloading for the film, as the Saturday holiday will be observed on Friday. Well, if you consider that Box Office Pro's own projection includes that holiday weekend, I would call that a con. Especially since The Flash wasn't helped by the Juneteenth holiday weekend. Can't imagine why that didn't work. But I agree with most of their cons, including the latest Disney Marvel product's excitement being based solely on the previous Disney Marvel's product. That's why Doctor Strange Mom did so well following Spider-Man No Way Home and Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 did so poorly on their own opening weekend thanks to Quantum Mania. The franchise is quite simply miles away from the zeitgeist capturing interest and enormous goodwill that for a time helped every film achieve automatic blockbuster status like Captain Marvel did four years ago. But then there's this. Social media traction for the Marvels has been noticeably weak in recent months, compounded by concerns that the ongoing Film Actors Guild labor strike may not resolve in time for Brie Larson and cast to promote the film. Their absence on the media circuit would be a major blow to Disney's efforts to pitch the film as a fun escapist experience, leaning into its organic girl power marketing message to bring out underserved female audiences. <laughs> no, I would consider that a pro. To be fair to the Marvels, let's take a look at some of Box Office Pro's previous projections for flops just from this year. On January 20th of this year, Box Office Pro predicted that Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania would have between a 96 million and a 131 million opening weekend box office with between a 249 million and 347 million total domestic box office. Antifa Man 3 ended up with a $104 million opening weekend and a domestic total of 214 million and a worldwide total of 476 million. Again, currently the Marvels is tracking roughly half of that. Let's go to The Flash. On May 19th, Box Office Pro predicted it would make between 115 and $140 million on its opening weekend, with a domestic total between $280 million and $375 million. Turns out The Flash only earned $55.1 million on its opening weekend, and it hauled in a domestic total of a whopping $101 million, and a worldwide gross of $270.6 million, a catastrophic flop. Let's do one more. How about Blue Beetle? On July 20th, Box Office Pro projected for Blue Beetle an opening weekend between 12 million and 17 million with a domestic
domestic total projected between 27 and 55 million. Box Office Pro did pretty well on this one, considering Blue Beetle's opening brought in a pathetic $25 million, with an embarrassing domestic total of 71 million and an even more embarrassing worldwide total of 128 million. So what did we learn, aside from the fact that of two of the three, Box Office Pro overestimated? Now, the Marvel's numbers couldn't get as low as Blue Beetle's, could they? But the news doesn't get any better because it looks like it's tracking right along with the Flash. Considering the reported budget for the Marvels, $270 million, and we already know that Marvel underreports their budgets famously, and it doesn't count marketing, this film has to make over $600 million minimum. So I guess the only question is, is it going to be a slight underperformer or a historic flop? But we could be wrong. Time will tell. Maybe there's plenty of people who are willing to watch or rewatch Captain Marvel, WandaVision, Miss Marvel, or Secret Invasion. And good news, that's only 16 hours and 40 minutes of D-plus content that's required to watch the Marvels. Unless, of course, you count Loki Season 2, which apparently leads directly to the Marvels. Make that 20 hours. Listen, that wasn't tactical. But I don't want the fives and tens of the Marvel fans out there to get down, because one of the shows I just mentioned just so happens to be the highest rated Disney Plus Marvel show ever. You big dildo, eat your fucking slot. Yes, we're talking about Miss Marvel, which is sitting at a 98% on Rotten Tomatoes, and I doubt anyone could question its legitimacy after this. That puts Miss Marvel over things like Daredevil Season 2, True Detective Season 1, Lawrence of Arabia, Bridge Over the River Kwai, and because there is justice in the world, one percentage point lower than the actual best television show that Marvel has ever made, Daredevil. Nothing fishy about that at all. One thing is clear, it certainly looks like we're heading towards the end of the MCU. And my problem with Captain Marvel and everything from stage four on hasn't been the actors. It's primarily been with the writing and the treatment of the characters. I liked Carol Danvers when she was Miss Marvel in the comics. I also liked Moon Knight, Shang-Chi, Scarlet Witch, and Namor, not Namor. But I think all of us comic book fans all knew deep down inside the day Disney bought Marvel that we'd get some good movies for a while, but ultimately it would come at the cost of the source material. And now the films are crap too, and it looks like we're headed towards another MCU flop. But you can't unmake the soup, and all we're left to do is marvel at the fact that Disney Marvel is going to release the Marvels. If you like what you heard, please like, share, and subscribe. If you didn't like what you heard, I thank you for listening this long. I will see you in the next video.